Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part two for this news report today. All right, we left off with here, former German, basically, politician exposes West alliance with Al-Qaeda. So the Syrian rebels receive money and weapons predominantly from Saudi Arabia and Qatar. Saudi Arabia is mainly supplying Al-Qaeda with the USA uh, knowing about it. And the West is providing political cover for the entire rebellion, including Al-Qaeda, which is a de facto ally um, of Al-Qaeda. So. But it goes on, it says Assad is a dictator, so is the king of Saudi Arabia and the emir of Qatar. The U.S. and the despots of Saudi Arabia and Qatar don't want to see democracy in Syria. Their objective is to knock out an important ally of Iran, which has become too powerful because of the Iraq war. So it goes on there and talks about, um, I guess, uh, secularism and um, how it's diverse the country. And it says here um, that nor does the fact that if the extremists win, two million Christians will lose their homes. So this uh, Todenhofer writes that Assad will be able to hold out for some time, therefore it would be better to negotiate with him than to continue this tragic civil war. He said what would be required is for the U.S. to force Saudi Arabia and Qatar to stop supplying the weapons, with Russia doing the same on the other side. A ceasefire should be used for talks between Assad and the opposition with the aim of forming a transitional government, of working out democratic constitution that protects minorities, and of preparing free elections under international monitoring. And finishing up, says that Assad is not that much interested in being a presidential candidate in 2014 if there is a fair peace agreement. He also writes that it's time for a correction of the West's course and must end its uh, cynical pact with al-Qaeda. Then a uh, new report says Brennan's black ops in Libya caused Benghazi Gate and Stevens' deaths. This is what I've actually have already been saying uh, for some time now. Benghazi Gate continues to unravel, and the man uh, who front who is front and center at this week's Washington, D.C. hearings is now being blamed for the Villa siege last September. According to a new investigative book published by two former U.S. Special Operations soldiers, it says here and serialized exclusively in yesterday's Daily Mail, the former CIA director David Petraeus was blackmailed by two CIA officers into uh, resigning and was made to publicly admit to his affair with intelligence operative Paula Broadwell. Of course, this angle of the story will surely drive book sales, but it is not the most significant revelation of the story. So it goes on and it says that the president's own deputy NSA advisor at the time, uh, and Bre uh, Brennan, had been authorizing covert unilateral operations outside the traditional command structure using the Pentagon's Joint Special Operations Command across Libya and North Africa. It says Brennan's black ops. Uh, that are said to have prompted retaliation inside Libya that led to the September 11th Benghazi compound siege that killed four Americans. So you can go in there and check it out. Links should be posted. Um, it just goes over what I was talking about. I mean, basically, they were there. They were arming these uh, rebels, the same rebels that killed uh, the people there at the base. So Southeast Asian countries, and of course, that branches out to Mali, branches out to Syria, and, and arming these, um, these factions of uh, Islamic extremists. Southeast Asian countries stock up on arms as they face off with China. These countries are stocking up on the latest military gadgets, expanding international arms webs as they seek to counter China's rise. So they're talking about these Russian-built submarines going to Vietnam and the Philippines. Uh, they're talking about sealing a deal to buy a squadron of jet fighters from South Korea and helicopters from Italy. It says there's a 200% uh, increase in Indonesian defense spending. Then next up we have credible Chinese mainstream source reports troop mobilization prepping for Japan war. Again, how credible is this? I don't know. I can't, I can't, I'm not going to put my name on it, but I'll just put it out there. You can make up your own mind about it. Troops active for several days and it says hostilities between China and Japan may be about to take a major turn for the worse. So this is right around the time of what? Of this whole uh, North Korea nuclear test. So it goes on here and says, plus before the news that the Chinese warship's radar has been repeatedly aimed at the Japanese ships and planes, for the media has speculated that China may prepare for war. There was a lot of exercises, but it's talking about large troop movements. Um, also on February 3rd, a large number of tanks wheeled military base from these um, is delivered to the coast areas. Many local residents of the tent situation are of some concern. Then of course you actually have the Chinese government uh, saying, you know, telling their, their their people to be ready for war, to be mobilized. The article says that they know the source of the story. This Falun Gong affiliated NTD TV, which I know does have some propaganda, has historically been a credible source of information that the Chinese uh, Communist Party desperately tries to censor. Um, it says here that 
if this is the case, this buildup of these vehicles and that and mobilization uh, bordering the East China Sea and closest to these Daiyu Islands is accurate, then hostilities between China and Japan may be about to take a major turn for the worse, like we said. University of Maryland shooting leaves two students dead and one injured. So this is a daily uh, news report for, uh, you know, shootings because there's like these types of shootings every day, I guess. At least two students have been killed and one injured in a shooting at the off-campus residence of University of Maryland in the latest um, shooting. So... It was a murder-suicide at an off-campus residence. It says here that when the student confronted his roommate for setting a fire in the basement of their shared house, he opened fire, killing one and injuring the other, and killed himself. Fugitive ex-cop Dorner reportedly dead after standoff with police. So, it says a shooting suspect, uh, the subject of a week-long manhunt, has not emerged from the cabin destroyed by the fire late afternoon. So they're saying that he barricaded himself in the mountain home following the deadly shootout with officers early Tuesday. So... It's interesting because they said that he killed, he murdered three people, but what about the people that were killed or, yeah, or shot or maimed in the line of fire um, by the cops? Would that be attempted murder or what? Uh, for whatever it's worth, there's people that are, are just really skeptical about the story. I am a little skeptical myself. I, you know, if this is this like uh, someone said, the, uh, the running man or something. I mean, is this some just some kind of uh, big uh, uh, show or something for the media? You know, because then they can start doing this with their description he tied up two women you know i mean that would be the ironic thing because he's talking about you know uh getting his name back right it's all you know like something out of a movie and i mean what would be worse than for somebody to go out acting like they're you and then start tying up women and, 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 and you know like shooting people and it's not even you i mean that's just creepy but the la residents to police don't shoot we're not dorner so these are the t-shirts have been going around says so after three Californians were nearly killed this week by police officers opening fire at people mistaken for suspected murder, it says the solution may finally stop the shootings. And I guess there's a little bumper, bumper sticker as well. So uh, Next up, dead bodies are rising from their graves. Hackers break into TV stations' emergency alert system to warn viewers of a zombie apocalypse live on air. The viewers in Montana saw a TV show interrupted by warnings that zombies were attacking the living. Dramatic fake announcement told people to not approach the dead bodies as they were considered extremely dangerous. The local station quickly released a statement that there was no emergency. It says no one is sure who hacked the system, how they did it, and why, but Gawker suggests that it could have been a viral, viral marketing campaign for AMC's zombie drama, The Walking Dead. I thought about it before. I, I think people are, I mean, like, we use that word a lot raw about zombies, but I think t people are technically, uh, can be considered... Uh, zombies. I think there are real life zombies out there. They're they're literally the Walking Dead. I mean, they ha they have no soul. <laughs> Man billed for ambulance that arrived after his father passed away. So it says when a 71 year old um, Duran Ford Senior man was struggling to breathe on New Year's New Year's Day, his family called 911. But the man died waiting for an ambulance that took 40 minutes to arrive. And that man man's family has now received a 780 dollar ambulance bill. So it goes on here and it says that uh, the family member says, I feel angry, upset, I'm disturbed that uh, we even received this bill. We're still grieving about the situation. He added, we're a very angry about what happened and the service we did not receive from the district. New York raises taxes on Sandy Head houses. I remember covering this about a month or two ago. It said New York homeowners from regions most severely impaired by Hurricane Sandy have suffered damage to their homes and expensive repairs, but the city is now inflicting a heavy tax hike upon those residents claiming their property values have risen. Councilman Michael Nelson told the New York Post uh, that common sense dictates their property values have fallen, if not plummeted in some cases. But the city claims property values for the homes in Manhattan Beach, Coney Island, Staten Island, and the Rockaways have shot up, even though many of those properties were damaged in the storm and still requires repairs. So that's interesting because it kind of sounds like uh, Louisiana. Um, you know, like if this was kind of like an engineered storm that they would want to just, you know, clear out all these houses and then, um, you know, there's investors that know what's going to be built there. There could be huge casinos, hotels, whatever, resorts, and uh, the, that's why the value is up. The, the only people that don't know are the people whose houses were demolished. A uh, Russian cop faces five years in jail after leaving disabled man to die on the street in negative 40 degrees Celsius. After losing his fingers as a result of 12 hours spent in sub-zero temperatures, a disabled man has died from a blood clot in a Russian hospital. 
policeman who refused to fulfill his duty by helping the man is now facing five years behind bars. So goes on here and it says that the incident actually happened last year when the 28-year-old speech impaired was boarding a bus with his mother when the door is shut before she can get on. Unable to communicate, uh, they spent some time circling the bus route before being let off at a suburban stop in the city. Lost and confused, he was spotted by a woman who called the police to help the stranded individual. The officer who responded to the call failed to carry out his duties, simply decided not to investigate the report any further. We just covered a story yesterday about uh, the elderly being more elderly are being uh, popping up in these uh, homeless shelters, and that uh, literally they're being dumped off <laughs> and at the front uh, at the front door, and, the, and like kind of like just sitting out there freezing, you know, with Alzheimer's and just standing there getting lost. So I mean, like I said, this is this is the way it is now. Um, I'm going to leave it off here. That's all I have for you today. So this. This is GGN and I'm Darko. Thank you.